I appreciate you all coming. Thank you so much. Um, if you're here to talk about JavaScript, you are in the right place. Um, so one thing I've heard many times today so far is like the, just a refrain, open source is eating the world, you know. Uh, and if that is true, if open source has truly eaten the world, then in my humble opinion, JavaScript is responsible for multiple helpings of said world. I think a lot about that kid's poem, um, Hungry Mungry by Shel Silverstein, you know, Hungry Mungry ate the whole world. Uh, and I think that actually may be about JavaScript, come to think of it. So uh, I don't know if anybody else share my opinion about that, but um, so click, there we go. So this uh, talk is about how, you know, the next, uh, well, I was going to say if, if it's going, if it's really eating the whole world, then uh, space is its next meal. Um, because, you know, we've sent JavaScript to space now. If you want to find out more about that and how it's being leveraged off planet, uh, or whether node modules really are the most heavy thing in the entire universe, um, you can check out this great talk that we had uh, from Christina Koch at our 2020 conference. Um, and uh, yeah, something I wanted to share. So I um, want to thank everybody for taking time to come. Um, my name is Jory Burson. I'm really lucky to be, uh, and I'm proud to be the community director for the OpenJS Foundation, where I get to work with an amazing team of people, including Robin, including Robin Yin, our executive director, uh, and Brian Warner, our program manager, also Liz, a community leader who's joined us here today, um, but a lot of community leaders from some of the largest and um, most highly consumed open source JavaScript projects in the world, including Node and Webpack, NativeScript, jQuery, which is still used by 70 plus percent of the web, AMP. Um, so it's a pretty big gamut of projects that we have. Um, and in December of last year, we wanted to uh, create a program that would help drive community and participation um, and general support and you know, other benefits and things for the foundation and its very uh, many and very different uh, projects. JavaScript Landia is that program and that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we'll discuss like some of the benefits that we found um, and as well, you know, how we got it off, off the ground and that kind of thing. And maybe it's something that will be applicable to you and your communities. But first, I'd love to tell you a little bit more about some of our projects for context uh, and also a little bit more about the foundation. So come on, there we go. So we have over 35 uh, open source JavaScript projects and they touch just about every layer in the software development stack. So we have um, core utilities like NVM and AJVJS and Lodash, which again, another project that's still quite highly consumed. We have um, packages that handle streaming and parsing, HTTP requests, native code integration. We have development tools like ESLint and Appium and QUnit and WebDriver that do testing and um, code linting and code quality. We have build tools like Webpack and Grunt. We have tools for accessibility and internationalization like WebHint, Moment, uh, Globalize, Message Format. We have some of the most highly deployed front end and back end frameworks on in the ecosystem: Express, Fastify, jQuery, and we have uh, we have tools that are functionally platforms of their own, right? So Node.js, Electron, AMP, Node Red. These are projects that have um, spawned their own ecosystems of plugins and open source libraries around them. So they work across. Solution domains, so we do deployment, IoT, serverless, low and no code. <laughs> we, uh, we, we serve hobbyists, we serve 100, uh, Fortune 100 companies alike, um, and we even have one of our projects is an award-winning project, Hospital Run. It serves um, medical facilities in uh, low or no latency environments in, uh, in Africa. So quite, a, quite the gamut of, uh, of projects here and in my view, maybe I'm biased, but in my view, they're all pretty critical to the web platform. They're also all independently managed, which is quite unique, I think. Um, and the truth is your organizations are probably using one or more of these, whether you realize it or not. So um, 
hopefully I'm not being too hyperbolic to say I think they're quite important. Um, they are also very different, um, as, as you can see from the previous slide. Not just are they different technically, but they're different in terms of size, so how, um, how many people are consuming them, how popular they are, uh, how many people are, um, how, how, big, how big their, their code bases are. Um, some of them are run by sole maintainers, so just one or two people driving the bulk of the project. Others have really large um, multi-organizational governance structures, um, thousands of contributors. So we've got the difference in governance models, we've got difference in um, the uh, geography. So some of them are more um, you know, popular in, other part, in different parts of the world or they're maintained from multiple parts of the world. Um, differences in their community and the culture around those projects. I think that's uh, actually one of the things that, you know, is, is a big strength. Um, it's a reflection of, I think, the broader JavaScript ecosystem. There is no one JavaScript community that rules it all. Um, it's decentralized, but it's also highly codependent. And, you know, I think this, this is one of the things that makes us a robust and resilient um, ecosystem. So uh, very different, very, very different groups. Um, this begs the question, though, if we're wanting to create community, how, uh, how do we define community? So this is a, a tough question, and it's one as a community director I want to ask you know, myself a lot. It's about kind of understanding the scope of, uh, and trying to understand the scope of the communities that we're trying to um, connect with. So that, that resonates with me. Um, the question of how we're fostering a community across all of these projects when in fact the projects themselves are, are very different and on the surface they maybe just look like the only thing they have in common is, is JavaScript. Um, that's like saying let's create a community of English speakers. It's quite, quite hard to do. So it's so challenging that a lot of people don't really think about this question um, or they don't really consider some of the distinct um, differences between audiences of, and communities that they um, until, until it may become you know an issue for them. So um, there was a book published in 2019 called Working in Public, and the author there kind of broke down uh, a couple of different communities that that um, she saw that kind of require a different touch. And so they have ma maintainers and core contributors all the way down to people who are end users, the folks just um, consuming uh, or using the project in some way. Um, or do you consider the, your definition of community to be all of the above? At the foundation, I think we take a really big tent approach. We, we want to be as inclusive as we possibly can um, and to take care to ensure that we have programs and offerings and stories and support for each level uh, because you know we don't just need to we've got the the core maintainers of these important tools um, but we also have the the end users and the um, the casual contributors and the commenters and the people who are supporting the project in some way through tutorials that we want to support so um, that is kind of a, like I said our big ten approach is to try try and tackle stuff that will help um, all, all of the above so <laughs> Uh, come on, thing. Here we go. We're gonna click. Um, there we go. So, why is it important? Is another question. Why is it important to define this uh, define this community? Well, as we mentioned, the ubiquity and the scope of JavaScript makes uh, defining the JavaScript community. Um, really, really difficult. It's just, it almost defies uh, definition in and of itself. Um, that is, I think, kind of uh, problematic because it can make it hard for people to learn the language. It can make it hard to, for people to, getting into JavaScript, to really understand, you know, what's the right way to build a modern web application? Um, how can I get involved with um, projects or make connections across projects? Um, how do I start to understand the differing perspectives or the differing um, techniques and strategies and approaches that may exist across 
JavaScript tech stacks? Um, at the very least, how can I start to feel welcome in a community um, or, at the, or at least successful in achieving my goals in JavaScript um, without that community? So I think um, beyond learning and mentorship and that um, you know, understanding of different perspectives, you also get the benefit of um, opportunity and ins inspiration when you create an effective uh, community, community space. Um, that's some of the, the, the challenges in not, in not doing a, a community. I, I loved this quote from Carl Sagan, which is originally, if you wish to uh, make apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. But I think it kind of applies to the JavaScript ecosystem as well. And that sense of overwhelming sort of like how do I in this space can be um, quite difficult to overcome if you don't have a community uh, space to uh, connect with. So, um, so that brings us to why the OpenJS Foundation. Um, so, we are, our foundation exists to serve this JavaScript ecosystem and to help build that community, to help take care of sort of our JavaScript water cooler spaces, if you will, um, by building connections across the projects uh, and sharing information to support, oh, did that just skip all the way to the end? That's cool. Why did that do that? Well, this is fun. Boop, boop, boop. There, there we go, okay. So, um, sorry about that. So we believe it's really important to provide this neutral home um, for our critical projects with the common principles of, uh, of, of shared of technical governance and accountability. Um, and to do that, in doing that, we're providing more long-term sustainability, both for the specific projects that we serve, but also for the ecosystem as, as a whole. So this idea that you know, we, can, we can create a space, even despite our, our differences in projects, um, we can create a space where all those projects can come together and share this information and be a node um, is very core to us. Oh, there we go. Now we go, okay, so it takes a lot of resources to do that. Um, and you know, that we're, we're providing both the community space, but also infrastructure and um, core services for like legal and financial support and um, that sort of thing. And it, it takes that re those resources to serve these communities in a long-term and, and sustainable um, and consistent way. So we're talking about probably tens of thousands of dollars each year uh, and also cross-industry collaboration, which is a lot more than you can kind of provide th just through crowdfunding. You really need um, your organizational sponsors and supporters to, to be with you and be behind you. Um, so thanks, many thanks to our member companies and our awesome board of directors uh, for all that they're doing to help our projects succeed uh, and uh, get them the support that uh, they need, that the projects need when they need it. But that brings us back to community. Um, we've got this system of, of uh, support that comes through our members, and we're, we're, which we're super grateful to. But we wanted to start looking for a way to elevate um, the hundreds and hundreds of uh, people who were letting us know that they also wanted to meaningfully contribute and support programs for projects uh, and community. So through some kind of membership system. Um, individual memberships in foundations aren't super duper common and, and we didn't have one. So we started to examine what could we do that would be meaningful um, that would be helpful. So we were also exploring ways to create um, sa more safe and, and productive spaces for JavaScripters to work on issues and, and get e expert access to information um, and from, from resources from our community leaders to potentially align themselves with our experts in the foundation, even if these were people who couldn't or weren't ready to contribute um, publicly or contribute technically, because there's 
obviously a, a lot of people using our projects who aren't necessarily ready to go file an issue and raise their hand on, on GitHub to get involved there. So to achieve that, those goals, we started to work on JavaScript Landia and we launched it in December 2020. It's a, again, it's an individual supporter program um, that we have a list of benefits and only charge about $25 a year. Uh, and this complements our organizational membership by, again, providing paths for those, uh, those folks to uh, deepen involvement. So the perks um, include um, we, digital badges uh, for the, their favorite uh, projects. They can put them on their social profiles or their personal websites um, and share those. That's, our, that's powered by a system called Credly. Um, we also provide discounts and exclusive offers on training, uh, cert certifications, conference, and, and that kind of thing um, for folks who want to attend and meet up or get involved more online that way. We also provide an insider newsletter, um, which helps drive awareness of things that are happening in the foundation. Um, it helps to also keep those communities involved, not just in um, what might be happening technically with the project, but what might be happening socially behind the scenes. Um, so those were some of these initial benefits that we brainstormed um, to provide something meaningful. We also um, almost forgot our uh, we have some exclusive promo items that we're going to be experimenting with, one of which is this awesome uh, badge that if you are a JS Landia member, um, Robin and I have badges for you. Uh, so come see us at this event or at any event um, in the next couple of calendar years. We'll be handing out cool badges for, for that. We also have some stickers that I will hand out to anybody who wants one. You can see it on my laptop here. It's cute. So um, yeah, but just little things that are meaningful um, and allow people to wear, wear their support in some way for open JS's projects um, and to help signal that they're here to help us drive alignment through these programs. So looking a little bit closer at the, uh, at the site, um, we set out with this initial list of benefits and uh, we've been really, really thrilled with the response so far. So if this is something that you're um, kind of considering for, you know, a, a program for your open source project, um, I'll share that the response has been overwhelming. We've had over 400 people who've signed up to date um, and they're listed on our site. So we provide this um, website for, for them to um, kind of display their badges and display opting in, of course display uh, information about themselves if they want to share it. Um, so you can, you can see all of our parties there. And then um, click. Uh, each member has their own page. So uh, this displays all the badges that they earned or an optionally other information that they may want to share with their developer community. Um, so Again, this is about helping encourage them to fly the flags of their favorite tools um, while also strengthening their connection to the bigger picture of, of, of JavaScript. So um, we'll be doing um, for our upcoming events, custom badges. We did for OpenJS World, we have badges for the um, training and certification program. Um, and yeah, we'll be rolling out other badges very soon. So yeah, coming soon, actually, uh, speaking of which, um, our long-term goal is to use this program uh, to turn the participants into ambassadors for the projects and uh, for the foundation by giving them hopefully a lot more leadership opportunities and a lot more opportunities to like wear the tech in a way, um, socially and, and otherwise that uh, you know that they can be proud of um, because they don't have to just identify as only a JavaScript or only a TypeScript developer, only a Node developer. You can you can be an intersectional JavaScriptist, I think. So um, we'll be adding more badges just for, for our for our projects. So uh, for leadership um, and mentorship roles that you may be uh, helping with in a specific project like Node. Also for badges 
um, optionally for JavaScript projects that would like it, uh, like TypeScript, for example, or React. These are not part of the foundation, but are certainly projects that lots of people love and want to support in some way. They'll, they'll be able to do that um, as those project opt-in. Um, we're also looking to develop more programs to, and this is so timely because of everything, more programs for the local community support. Um, we have obviously JavaScript communities all over the world and there's more that I think we can do to support um, fostering the, the individual leaders in those communities. So using the program to help foster, um, foster that and also adding more features to the website like social sharing and em embedded, um, embeddable pages and that kind of thing. So um, really helping to create stronger bonds and hopefully a richer picture of, of all of the many, many activities that are happening um, across the world of JavaScript. Um, all right, so we're, we're, what are we doing with these funds? What are we um, gonna, uh, what are the members helping to drive um, with, with this? We've got a lot of different community programs that we run at OpenJS Foundation, which are open to all, but obviously, especially JavaScript Landia participants. Um, we do a community book club, which I think is really fun because I'm a book nerd. And we've talked about, um, we're doing them quarterly. We've done, um, Working in Public by Nadia Eggball, and we've done, um, we did two for one the last time, which was uh, How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell, uh, which is not really about how to do nothing, and um, Braiding Sweetgrass, and they were, they were really great. So you can come join us and nerd out about open source books if you want. Um, we have a collab space program, which is um, a, a great opportunity for, again, fostering leadership. Um, we have one collab space rolling right now. It's the package vulnerability um, collab space. So if you're interested in having conversations with peers about, um, you know, in this case, we're specifically protecting packages and vulnerability disclosure and, and reporting and that kind of thing. And that's a great little community to get involved with, but there, there are others on the way. We have um, our community fund which is something that um, our members are able, our, our community members are able to participate in. And this includes things like um, the Travel Fund, which is something we've done for quite some time, where we support uh, people who otherwise would not be able to attend our events, or maybe they wanna go to um, a specific projects uh, summit or something like that. We can support them um, through the Travel Fund or if you want to host a meetup about one of our projects, supporting you that way. Um, scholarships, we're, we just launched a, um, the, the Lyft Scholarship Program, which is open through October 15th for people who are interested in um, you know, getting, uh, taking the node certification or training. And then um, a thank you program, which is one uh, that is near and dear to me, where we will uh, we'll be helping project maintainers and community members thank those who are making meaningful contributions. Um, other programs that we, we drive at the foundation include the training and certification um, and a web standards working group where we have a big cross group of people coming together to talk about um, issues in web standardization and how to, um, how to get involved in information share. Um, and there's, uh, there's gonna be a project launching from that group, hopefully a little later this fall. So um, lots of cool, lots of cool things going on. Um, so in closing, you know, we had an opportunity last fall uh, to kind of figure out how we could get more of our um, community together um, and get people who weren't ready maybe at that time to, you know, get involved and, and learn more about the project and learn more about OpenJS. And um, we, we, we tried that through this, uh, this program. So far it's going really well. Um, and uh, we, we hope that you will consider adopting similar programs for your, um, for your projects, but also we hope that you'll consider uh, joining JavaScript Landia and getting more involved with the OpenJS Foundation because we have a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, yeah, 
let me see if there are any questions about JavaScript landing or any of the foundation's programs because we've got a lot of stuff. And, I, and stickers are one of the things that we have a lot of also. Okay, cool. Well, and thank you all for your time.